So let's say that you wish to start a new project. Um, the two files that we have here that we're going to use to start this project with, um, assuming we already have them saved as tech or as files essentially, are let's uh, let's look at demo.java and some of prods.java. Um, so some of prods looks like that, and then demo.java looks like that. So what I'll do then, um, I'm going to create a new Java project. Let's go over here, open up Java project. So file, new Java project. Let's give it a name. Um, let's call it um, my lab. Um, Let's call it lab01. And I'll use the standard defaults here. And I won't uh, set this for using module a module-info.java file. I'll just hit finish here. And now I have something here called lab1 that you can see over here at the top left. What that does for you is that it creates a structure and in this case it's in my directory that you can see here C users khots eclipse workspace lab one and I can go to that um, folder directly so you'll see that that's what that folder looks like so by creating a project um, called lab one you've created a folder called lab one if I go into that in that folder you'll have binary files or class files and then you'll have source files and those source files that are there will um, ultimately be whatever I put in there. So let's go ahead and put something in there um, from existing files. So under lab one, you see that SRC, SRC has nothing in it, but I know that I have a couple of files that I wish to put in there. So I'm going to grab those two demo.java, some of products.java, put those in there copy files or and create copies um, or just link to the files in their current directory this current directory is called temp delete at will so i'm going to go ahead and copy those files so now that when i open up uh, source you'll see a demo.java in there and you'll also see in eclipse um, this other file called sumofprods.java. So with this particular setup, demo is creating an instance of some of prods, of a sum of prods um, object, and then it's calling a method called SOP1. Um, and so, so well, uh, creating a method called SOP, um, called get sum of prods. So let's go over to sum of prods and look at the get sum of prods. Right now it has nothing in there. So when I run main within here, let's go ahead and run it. You see that there's a 99. If I go back to sum of prods and let's call it um, um, one, two, three, four. And I can tell by the asterisks in Eclipse that it's not been saved. So I can control S to save it or just hit save, um, right? That's easiest for me just to hit control S and save it. And then now that it's saved, um, I'll go ahead and run it demo.java and let's run this. And instead of 99, I'm hoping to see 1, 2, 3, 4. And you can see the output over here is 1, 2, 3, 4. So this instance of a, of a sum of prods um, object has methods. And those methods show up when we use code completion, SOP1 dot. And it shows you the methods that are available to us. Some of these are the inherited methods that equals the get class. And the others could be the ones that we create, such as the get sum of prods. So code completion in Eclipse will show that to you. Now, 
one, two, three, four works. Um, one of the issues with this right here is that you know we're we're hoping that um, that someone has passed an information from the command line, right? And I'm hoping to populate two different arrays, and in those arrays, I read this information from the command line um, to go ahead and get those arrays established. So just to do a check to see if we're reading anything in, let's say that we do a system.out.print. So the shortcut for that is SOP, system.out.print, control space. And let's see, system.out.print, control space would normally bring that up. But in this case, it's not configured to accept that shortcut, so we're going to have to type that out. System that out that print line, and let's try to print out um, an element um, of the array x1. So let's say that we print out x1, and we want to print out the first. And I am expecting an error here, so let's run this, and we get an error. Array index out of bounds exception. That's because there is no array that's been established. In order to test this in this environment, I need to set up um, the command line arguments. So on, for command line arguments, in order to read them, you're going to have to go um, either run it from the command line or use Eclipse. Um, it's no, the Eclipse environment. So if I say run, run configurations, And then select the second tab argument. Now, if I want to, for example, put in two different arrays, two one-dimensional arrays, for example, one array has one one and the other one has two two, I would put it in like one one two space two. I would put it in like that. That creates two different arrays. Um, so these numbers will have to be, uh, they're anticipated, it's set up so that um, you can, uh, this works only with even sized inputs. So let's go ahead and apply that. This time when I run it, what I get is, certainly it's returning my one, two, three, four, but more importantly, um, it's showing you that x1 sub 0 um, is a 1. And if I wanted to also print out x1 sub 1 and print out the rest. So to print out all of the um, elements in both arrays, you'll see that it's printing out um, x1 as elements 0 and 1, and x2 as elements 0 and 1. So each one of those um, elements were entered in here under run, run configurations, and let's go to run configurations, tab arguments. So each one of these was entered essentially as a string. So we used some standard library functions in order to parse um, those strings, right? So we used integer.parseInt to parse each one of those strings like that into essentially an integer. So there is certainly a difference between an integer and a string. One is kind of, well, essentially a character and the other one is store it truly as an integer. So the data that's read in is read in as an array of strings. And so we have to go through and parse each one of the elements within the array, arcs of 0, arcs of 1, arcs of 2, and 3 in this case, and take that and convert it to um, the correct type. In this case, it's an integer. So it looks like we are now able to read in data and convert it from the command line to um, its proper data type. So this will allow you to start testing um, 
command line argument inputs. You could even print out x sub 1 and y sub 1 to make sure that it, you're receiving it correctly inside of some of Java.